Sarah Igor Swiatek beat Osterberg in the Rome fight. Well, in my opinion, it comes down to three main factors. The defense and the movement, the adaptation to variety, and the ability to execute her game plan better. Now, now before we go into how she beat her, we have to understand their game styles. Starting with Swiatek, um, she is an awkward player with an emphasis on aggressive ground strokes, which means what she likes to do is, in an ideal scenario, she's going to spend a lot of her time on the baseline, being able to maneuver her opponent and take advantage with her big, powerful ground zone. Now, she has both a powerful forehand and a powerful backhand. So she wants to stay close to baseline, maneuver her opponent, and attack whenever possible. And she's very comfortable moving forward to the net and finishing from there. So that's her game plan. She wants to be able to stay close to baseline, be aggressive with the ground strokes, and move forward. Now, Anstra Burr, on the other hand, she is also an awkward player, with a slightly different emphasis, though. Now, Jabur has a little bit more variety to her, so she she's trying to use her variety to force mistakes from her opponent. So she loves using that low slice. She loves mixing in the drop shot, and occasionally she also likes coming forward. So that variety makes it much tougher for your opponent to find a rhythm. So as an awkward player, she has the ability to use a lot of different shots. One of her favorite ones, though, and that she's really known for, is that drop shot, especially on that backhand side. So she has big ground strokes to do this first, push her opponent back, and then catch them off guard with that drop shot. So her plan is using variety, push her opponent back, and then use the drop shot. But that brings us into the first reason why Sviantek won. And by the way, I will say this though, the final was closer than the score indicated, but still, Sviantek was very dominant in her performance. Now, the first reason is the defense and the movement. Now, we just talked about how Jabur or Ans Jabur loves using that drop shot and loves kind of pulling her opponent in. Now, using the drop shot and using a lot of variety, we have to take a look at how well uh, Sviantek defended. So she was very good at moving laterally along the baseline and she does such a good job of getting low and neutralizing those big shots. Normally what happens when you hit powerful shots and when you get your opponent in trouble, they're a lot more likely to miss or they're a lot more likely to hit you something weaker or shorter that you can move in on and attack. Sviantek, on the other hand, because she's so good at the movement part and she's so balanced and low when she gets those shots, she's able to actually hit a pretty decent defensive shot when she is in trouble. And specifically what she does is normally you're waiting for that short ball that you can attack. However, she's so good at finding her balance and the control that she's able to actually hit that shot fairly deep in the court, which makes it much tougher for your opponent to attack now. So the defense and the movement is a really key thing. Now I'm going to touch on the movement in just a moment here when I talk about the, the ability to adapt, but that's kind of the, the basics. So she's able to use her movement, run down those drop shots, and be so balanced at, when she's on the defense that she gets out of trouble quite a bit. Now, the second reason why she won is this, and that's her ability to adapt. So I just mentioned that Anstruber loves using the variety, and she loves using that drop shot uh, against her opponents. But part of that, though, is when you're using the slice, when you're using more spin, when you're using the drop shot, it makes it a little bit tougher sometimes to get a rhythm. Now, think about big, heavy, aggressive baseliners like Sabalenka, for example, or Sakari, who love being around the base and who love teeing off on a lot of those shots, you know, it's a little tougher sometimes when you're getting so many shots that are out of your strike zone and they're breaking your rhythm. So Shriante is amazing at adapting to the variety, whether it's the slice, the drop shots, whatever it is, Shriante is able to adapt very well, not just with her movement, but also with her entire gaming style. So she's able to adapt midpoint in, in terms of what she has to do to win that point. Now, the ultimate goal for any of us is to try and actually increase the chance of us winning the point because we do want to win the point, right? So if we want to win the point and if we want to increase the chance, we also have to adapt a little bit. And sometimes that means we have to adapt to the height, the speed, the spin, maybe the direction of the shot. But Sviantek does that better than almost anybody else at the moment. But she's able to adapt so well that it's harder for her opponent to force mistakes and force weaker shots. Now, for most of us, you force your opponent into hitting weaker shots or missing 
by either hitting a really good shot that, that gets them in trouble or simply hitting a shot that they might not be able to expect or adapt to. Which brings us in the third and the last point. Now before I mention that though, go ahead and smash like and subscribe and check out some of the other videos on my channel that are guaranteed to help you level up your game. Now the last point is this, and that is the ability to execute your game plan a little bit better. So we talked about what Osterborough wants to do. She wants to use the variety, she wants to use the drop shot to her advantage. Triantic wants to stay close to baseline, and she wants to be able to attack and move forward if she can. Now here we have a great example of Iga Shvantec executing her game plan, being able to be aggressive with those big ground strokes and moving forward. So let's take a look at her positioning real quick and then the ability to move forward. So number one, we want to highlight her positioning. So as we can see, she does stay close to baseline, which is where she wants to stay in order for her to find the moment to attack. Now in this moment, she wants to try and find that short ball to try and attack. Now also, when you actually stay close to the, uh, to the baseline, what you can do is you can rush your opponent on more shots, which means they're more likely to miss or they're more likely to give you something weaker or shorter. But it's also easier to hit through them. In this case, she chose the second one where she was trying to hit into the open court and force a weaker or shorter ball from Jabora, which is exactly what she gets after getting her in trouble. And as a result, she gets that short ball. She is able to move, oops. She's able to move forward and attack and finish at the net. Now, in tennis, it's a little bit of a tug of war sometimes. So when you look at two really good players like that who are playing each other, now, the, the match could go either way. And if they play 10 times, I would probably say Sviantek should, should win maybe seven of them. But it doesn't mean Anstruber doesn't have a chance to ever beat Sviantek. But sometimes it's just a little bit about the current form on that day and also how well they're able to execute their game plan. So sometimes it's a little bit of a tug of war who can execute their game plan better. And the goal of the game plan is you want to do something that wins you a majority of the points. But if you can execute your game plan, if your opponent is executing their game plan a little bit more often, you know, they're going to end up winning a majority of the points. And so even on Stuber, she used her slides, she used the variety, she used the drop shot, but Sviantek just, she adapted better and she was able to use her game plan a little bit more often. And part of what she did there is she really tried to make sure she hits deeper in the court. So Sviantek did a great job hitting that ball deeper in the court, now pushing Jabbar back, and that makes it, it makes it harder for her, for her to hit a drop shot or use a variety if she's more on the defense and if she's being pushed back in the court. So Sviantek spent more time in her comfort zone compared to Jabbar, and that part is a big difference. So she just spent more time in her comfort zone, and therefore she was able to dictate play more often, and therefore she was able to win more points. Now this rally is a great example of just the ability to adapt from Sviantek, the variety that Anster Burr has, and just the overall defense and movement of Sviantek. So this just puts it all together, and we're going to break it down in just a second. So just keep watching the point. Some amazing shots in this rally, and just overall, just amazing to watch. So in this point, we really saw it all. So if we start at the beginning here, we have to kind of go back to the return. So once the rally gets going, we do see pretty quickly the movement and the ability to defend from Schwanting. So great movement. And check out the, the shot that she hits on the defense. So she hits that ball, again, really deep, which is what we just talked about, defending, being able to be balanced, and hitting that ball nice and deep. So we kind of see a few more shots here. And then on Stuber, throws in that drop shot. Now, again, this is a great, great example of variety from Jabur and the ability to actually adapt and move to that short ball from Shvantec. So again, just a great example of seeing all those skills and actions. Then here again, Shvantec adapting to that shot. Um, getting back in the point, here's another great example of Shvantec being balanced and defending. So just take a look at how low she gets and how well she does on the defense. Now, once we, get, once we get back in the point, again, a deep defensive shot. Now, Jabur a little bit in trouble there, but still hits that ball nice and defensive. Again, Sviantek defending, and once again, throwing in that drop shot from Ons Jabur. And once again, moving up and getting that ball comfortably 
because of the great movement from Shviante. And as a last example, again, the ability to adapt to many different situations. And as a result, she's comfortable at the net and able to finish. So, so this round just puts it all together. And it's just an amazing, it's a, an amazing point in tennis, but also an amazing example of how this entire match played out. And overall, Schwiantek was able to do her thing just a little bit more often than Jabur was. Now, I think this makes Iga Schwiantek the favorite to win the French Open in just a few weeks. Now, let me know down in the comment section below who you think is the favorite to win the French Open on the women's side. And don't forget, smash like and subscribe, and thanks for watching.